Okay, I'm super excited because today we're learning trigonometry. Not all of trigonometry. This, this is just an introduction because trigonometry is a course like all in and of itself, but it is the niftiest stuff. Like it's amazing. So first we have to review what we know about triangles. We've been studying triangles and if you classify triangles by their angles, you can have acute, you can have obtuse, and you can have right triangles. And within the right triangles, we have the 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90 special triangles. The problem is that not every triangle can be special, like the 45, 45, 90, or the 30, 60, 90, but every triangle does have special relationships built in. And that's where trigonometry comes in. So the word trigonometry comes from the Greek term trigon, which means triangle, and metron, which means measurement. And I'm going to introduce you to three special relationships that are in every right triangle. The first one is sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. The next one is cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the next one is tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. Now, I'll explain what those all mean in just a second. But the first problem is how do I remember this? Here's a trick I use. I think about it as a word. So, ka, toa. If you can remember so, ka, toa, sine, opposite hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent hypotenuse, tangent, opposite, adjacent, you'll be good to go. I'm just going to leave that up there for a little bit. So here's a general triangle. First, we're gonna talk about sine. Now, if we talk about the sine of A, what we're doing is we're looking from the perspective of A. And sine says to look across to the opposite side, take the measure of the opposite side and divide that by the measure of the hypotenuse. That's the sine of A. Well, what about the sine of B? Well, the sine of B, again, you look from the perspective of B, look across to the opposite side, take the measure of that side and divide it by the measure of the hypotenuse. That's the sine of B. Let's look at the cosine of A. Cosine of A from the perspective of A. This time we're gonna look adjacent, right next to the angle. So the measure of the adjacent side divided by the measure of the hypotenuse gives us the cosine of A. Cosine of B, from the perspective of B, we look at the adjacent side first, the measure of the adjacent side divided by the measure of the hypotenuse. And finally, tangent. Tangent from the perspective of A, we're just gonna leave the hypotenuse out of this and we're gonna go opposite divided by adjacent. So the tangent of A is opposite over adjacent, the tangent of B, same thing, but from the perspective of B. The opposite divided by the adjacent side. Now, let's give this a go with a real triangle. So here's a triangle with sides 32, 40, and 24. And we're gonna find the cosine, sine, and tangent of J, the sine, cosine, tangent of L. We'll start with J, and if we're looking for the sine of J, we're going opposite divided by hypotenuse. So that's 24 over 40, which if you put that in your calculator, you get about 0.6. The cosine of J is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So that's 32 divided by 40, which is about 0.8. Tangent of J is opposite divided by adjacent, 24 over 32, about 0.75. Now let's do all the same things, but from the perspective of L. So the sine of L opposite divided by hypotenuse, 32 divided by 40 is 0.8. Cosine of L adjacent divided by hypotenuse, 24 divided by 40, which is about 0.6. And the tangent of L opposite divided by adjacent, 32 divided by 24, which is about 1.33. Okay, so the next question is, 
why? <laughs> why are we doing this? There are so many reasons why we do this. But one reason is that if we know an angle measure, we can use these trig ratios to find the side lengths. I'll show you what I mean. So in this triangle, we know 36 degrees, we know one leg is seven, but we're missing the other leg. So we see 36 here. We don't know the opposite, but we do know the adjacent. Okay, so opposite and adjacent. That's tangent. So we know that the tangent of 36 is the measure of x divided by 7. Okay, now you need to go grab a calculator. And on your calculator, scientific calculator, you'll see these buttons, sine, cosine, and tangent. So if you put in tangent of 36, you'll get 0.727. So we know 0.727 equals x divided by 7. We can multiply both sides by 7, and we know that that missing side is 5.09. Let's try another one. So this time, we're missing the hypotenuse. We know 63, we know the opposite side, but we need the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, that's sine. So we know the sine of 63 equals 12 divided by x. Now we have to get x by itself, so we gotta do a little bit of algebra here. We're gonna multiply both sides by x, so we get x times the sine of 63, then, to get x by itself, we'll divide both sides by the sine of 63. So x equals 12 divided by the sine of 63. Grab your calculator, plug that in, and you'll find that our missing hypotenuse is 13.47. Now, we can flip this process and use the inverse trig ratios to find angle measures. So in this case, we're missing this angle measure for x. But we do know the length of the opposite side, and we know the length of the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, that sine. So we know that the sine of x is 6 over 18. This is where what we call the inverse comes in. If we take the sine inverse of 6 over 18, go grab your calculator, and look on top of sine, cosine, and tangent, and you'll see those little inverse buttons. So we're gonna take sine inverse of six over 18, and that will give us the angle measure of 19.47 degrees. We'll try another one. Okay, so we're missing x, but we do know the opposite side and we do know the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent is tangent. We know the tangent of x is 19 over 22. So we're gonna grab those inverse buttons, take the tangent inverse of 19 over 22, and we know that the measure of x is 40.82 degrees. So that's trigonometry, or the introduction of trigonometry. You can do so much with trig functions. This is just the beginning. Thanks for being here.